as, as we talk about this, the story is resolved, but the fact that it even got this far is amazing. So let me start with this tweet. This is from Stephen Greenhouse. He's with the New York Times, a former, he's used to be with the New York Times. Crazy. When seven Wisconsin hospital workers quit to work at another hospital for better pay and work-life balance, the first hospital didn't try to match the second hospital's offer. It instead got a judge to issue a temporary order blocking the workers from leaving. What? So let me go, you know, take you through memory lane. I don't know about you. When I worked for other people, long time ago, I worked at Fox News, for example right? Uh, dark, t dark day. If you have questions, we could talk about it on the members call. I worked at Fox News, first media job, well, second media job. At first, I worked in local television in college. So I went to, I went to Fox. I said, hey, I got an offer from MSNBC. Uh, Fox asked me how much it was for. I told them they're giving me a $10,000 raise. Uh, Fox actually offered to match it, but I didn't want to be at Fox anymore, so I decided to leave. This would be the equivalent, not that I'm a healthcare worker, this would be the equivalent of like Fox News going to a judge and saying, uh, this person <laughs> is breaching, you know, we, we can't go on without this person, and somehow it's a life-threatening thing if this person leaves. Literally, what this hospital did was say, these seven workers who are at will employees, so they're not on a contract. They could they could come and go as they please, and the hospital could fire them as they please. In this country, you don't need much of a reason. But these workers, what happened was they, you know, felt um, underappreciated, did, didn't have a work-life balance, crazy hours, all the things that nurses and hospital workers I've spoken to over the last few weeks, very common. Hospital workers are being worked down to the bone. There is no work-life balance, particularly during COVID. So- they got an offer from a, another hospital for more money. They go to their hospital. They say, will you match? The hospital says no. And these workers are like, all right, I'm giving you my notice. And the hospital literally goes to a judge to basically stop them from going over to the new hospital, cl claiming it's a public health emergency, this and that. Uh, let me read a little bit from the article here. Seven healthcare workers will be able to start their new job at Ascension St. Elizabeth Hospital in Appleton, Wisconsin, after a judge dismissed a temporary restraining order Monday that was barring them from doing so at the request of their former employer, uh, Theta Care. Uh, so to be clear, initially the judge granted the injunction that temporarily stopped these workers from moving over to the new hospital, but now, thankfully, the judge saw the light and, and dismissed it. Um, out of Gamey County Circuit Court Judge Merrick McGinnis ruled that Data Care's arguments were not enough to uphold the injunction. McGinnis said that he signed the initial restraining order Friday because of the gravity of the situation that Data Care laid out in their complaint. Wisconsin statute says the court should give substantial weight to any adverse impact on public safety when deciding what to require in the order. Uh, let me go down a little bit. Uh, employees say Data Care's actions were hurting hurtful after years of service. Testimony on Monday from the employees who worked together for years at Data Care's Nina Hospital, or Nena, I might be mispronouncing it, described a tight-knit team of technicians and nurses who wanted a better work-life balance for themselves and their colleagues. Kaylee Young, a former interve uh, interventional radiolog radiology technician at Data Care and the first of the group to apply to Ascension, said she had worked at Data Care for almost 11 years. She had planned to stay there, but became disgruntled last March when two other employees on her team were let go for reasons that she didn't think were right. At that point, she said she began to look for other work because her position requires her to live within 30 minutes of the hospital. Ascension St. Elizabeth was her only option. She applied for an open position at Ascension at the end of last year. The offer she eventually received from Ascension will give her, quote, life-changing money and fewer weekends that she needed to be on call, making it easier for her to be at home with her family. She encouraged the other technicians on her team to apply for other roles. When they each had received offers, they approached Data Care on December 21st and asked if the hospital would match the offers. They were told they would not be matched and that Data Care leadership understood the seriousness of losing all four technicians, but was willing to let them go. But Young said on Monday she would not return to work at Data Care, even if the injunction was upheld. It hurt to have her former employer argue that she and her colleagues don't care about the good of the community. So, Steve, 
this public health emergency that if it's such an emergency, which COVID is an emergency, uh, they didn't want to match these seven workers. Let me just give you a little nickels and dimes here on uh, Theta Care. Uh, Theta Care features 460 beds and has generated approximately 734 million annual net revenue. Let me repeat. Wow. 460 beds has generated approximately 734 million annual net <laughs> revenue. In fact, I'm wow. reading from Ensemble and Theta Care named winners of HBI's 2020 annual revenue cycle awards. So they won an award <laughs> for their revenue. 734 million annual net revenue. That's a pretty damn good haul. Uh, let me also read. Uh, this is from uh, Fitch Ratings. ThetaCare's operating risk assessment is strong with operating EB EBITDA margins uh, averaging close to 9% over the past three years. Uh, ThetaCare has managed well through the pandemic, receiving a total of about $83 million in relief funding with 27 wow. <laughs> with 27.7 .7 million remaining to be recognized in fiscal 2021. So folks, break it down. This company, $734 million in net revenue, and they got $83 million in free money from the government. They wouldn't match these seven workers, you know, whatever raise they were getting from the other hospital. But instead of actually matching it, they went to a judge to stop them from at will movement to another company. It's mind boggling, Steve. I mean, I'm happy the judge after initially granting the injunction tossed it, but just the fact that right. this hospital did that underneath Steve, if you look at it, this stuff's going on all over, all over the country. I, I'm talking to nurses on top of the horror stories you hear about the COVID patients and overflowing emergency rooms and how many patients they're, they're, are dying, uh, uh, you know, while they're having to see this. They're talking about the understaffing that hospitals, instead of giving them raises and hazard, hazard pays, are offering traveling nurses like two, three grand more uh, to come to their hospitals. Yet this hospital that's, it seems, making money hand over fist, instead of just paying these workers more, went to a judge to stop them from exercising the free market. Yeah, yeah. So we got a couple things going on here. I want to take it two different angles because it's really important to see both sides of this. Not that there's two sides to their story, but there's two sides to the story that we need to see as people. So number one, I just want to break down EBITDA. EBITDA is expenses before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization. And it's one of those typical business things that they look at. And that, I mean, they're kicking ass, right? They're making a lot of money. However, the burnout that has occurred in frontline hospital workers and the burnout that has occurred in hospitals in general, not just, you know, the nurses and doctors, but, you know, gurney, you know, x-ray techs, phlebotomists, you name it, all those people is very real. And if you look at our push in the United States right now, the people that want Medicare for all and so forth, this is really should be very alarming. It, forget the expenses, forget the pay, et cetera, for the moment. There is a shortage of these individuals. People have left the workplace, period. They, they don't want to do it anymore. They want out. And so that means that you need more of these people trained and ready to go for us to have enough doctors, nurses, lawyers, you know, whatever across the board. We need all of those people to, to give Medicare for all if we were to do something like that. If we were to have a health care service, we need many, many more of those kinds of workers. That should show us right off the bat that we have not prepared properly to support a move to Medicare for all or anything like that as an aside. Now, back to this. The reason why they're putting going after an injunction here is not about the pay. The bottom line is, is that they, they, they don't want to set a precedent. They don't want to set a pay precedent that when this pandemic is over, they can't unset. So they're willing to spend extra money on traveling Uberization nurses, if you will, uh, because they're not giving them benefits. They're not giving them anything else. It's just additional pay as whoever else, who, if they're working for a staffing agency, they're getting their benefits through them or they're getting their benefits through, uh, you know, the marketplace, the ACA marketplace or wherever the hell they're getting them from. But bottom line is that hospital is most likely not providing 
a full suite of benefits. And so they're willing to pay a premium for that because they know when the time comes, they could just let them go. They don't, if there's no need for them, they can just let them go. So this is more about adding precarity and more about ensuring that they don't set a new high watermark on wages when this is over and then they're stuck paying this because nobody wants to have their wages clawed back. So they could afford this all day long. There's no question about it. But this comes down to a fact that we don't have enough frontline workers and they're out there competing for these things. And and quite frankly, they don't want to settle uh, the watermark. That That's what it all comes down to. They want their cake. They want to eat it too. But the more alarming factor is that we don't have enough of those kinds of work in this country to staff up to meet the basic needs, the basic health care needs of all American citizens. And that should be number one priority as a nation is making sure that we have enough doctors, nurses, et cetera, to, to address the health care in this country. Um, we're not, as, as a government, the government is failing us big time there, even without Medicare for all. There, there should be all kinds of uh, incentives to get people trained and to get people into these positions because we need them we need them Mm -hmm. we need to replenish those who have left the workforce and we need to replenish those who have retired etc i i think it's a very very serious it is a national healthcare emergency in that sense that we don't have enough it is absolutely an emergency should not be stopping them from moving to another hospital though